Ah, hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, this is Adigoke um, Omotola. I'm back on the session, the first one we finished, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, I think my my friend from Australia uh, was supposed to show up and, um, you know, I think because of a time zone, you know, um, we were, I think, in Melbourne, Australia, it's uh, one hour, you know, you know, there's a, 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 a time difference and lag, you know, so um, I'm just going to send that message now, um, you know, to join me um, on the session. We're going to be adding some value. Uh, so um, I'm trusting that she'll be able to come in. Uh, my name is Adigo Kiamotela. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just waiting for my friend. <laughs> Choma, thank, thank you for joining again. Yeah. I'm just sending her a message, you know, to join me. Yeah. Um, I'm just sending her a message to join me. She's joining us from Australia. Yeah. I'm just going to send her a mail to join me. Please join me now. Join me in this on the on the IG. Yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Choma is still there. Yeah. Thank you. On the IG. Yeah. Yeah. Sure that um, Bron should, should join now. Yep, she should join me now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm so thankful that um, you know um, we're on this uh, session because, like I said, you know, it's about collaboration. You know. Uh, in this space, once you build up your credibility, you know, it makes it much more easier for you to show up, you know. And, um, you know, I mean, the lady that is joining me from uh, Australia, Bron Williams, she's an amazing lady. She's a, a bias specialist. Uh, she's, uh, she was in the educational sector for about 30 years, and she's showing up. And uh, I trust that, uh, you know, for those of us that have been patient enough, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we're going to get some value. Wow, wow. Okay, Bron, can you request to join me? Send a request. Yeah. Send me a request. Yeah. Send me a request. Or I can also add you. Yeah. I'll add you now. I, I've sent Yeah. Bron, yeah. I've sent you an invite, Bron. Just click on it and so they can join me in the studio. Oh, wow. <laughs> How are you doing, Bron? I'm well. And look, I do apologize. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm really well. I'm just... Um, <laughs> You know, okay, I'm know, just going to get this. You, you know, I've, I've, been, I've, little, um, I've been on set for about an hour, you know. I think there was a mix-up with the time. Yes, yes, I think I think so, um, because it kept saying it was 7 o'clock, right. my time, and then I realised um, it, uh, it, was, uh, it was not going to be 7 o'clock my time <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> Well, well, when I found out that you'd been live for an hour, I'm thinking, no, it's not going to be seven o'clock. <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought maybe yes. you slept off, you know. Um, well, see, I could have been I could have been here at six o'clock my time, but I was thinking it was seven. You know, the um, the the night I had was seven o'clock. It doesn't matter. We're here. Wow, wow, wow. 
I just want to celebrate you, you know, because I know that um, you mean so much to me and my family. We just celebrate you, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, how's, how's the weather? Well, it's getting warmer. <laughs> wow, wow. Are you going for the um, Australian Open? No, I'm not. I, but I have been watching it on the television. All right, all right. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to put the, um, the title, you know, and so that I can pin it. Great. Yeah. Wow. Okay. How to grow your global networks, yeah. Um, uh, pin comment, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So how are you today? How are you today? <laughs> uh, well, I'm bright and raring to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just want to celebrate you, Bron. You, um, you're a fascinating lady. You know, uh, I've known you for quite a bit now, you, you know, since 2021. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is almost about the third session we're having together. I want to also yes. celebrate you for uh, the access that you helped me to to gain globally um, and also the validation that you give me from time to time on LinkedIn and all my social media platforms. And I equally, uh, you know, um, wish you, you know, um, a fantastic journey as you show up globally. Yes. Um, now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that's the way, you know, I mean, you, you don't, you don't want to play, you don't want to play small, you know, the way the world is going. Um, there's so much opportunities. What do you think? What do you think, Bron? Oh, look, I do. Um, one of the things that um, I have found, uh, actually, I'll start again, in that one of my favourite mantras is that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Um, and you can, you know, you can tell from my grey hair, I've been around the sun a few times. Yeah. And you complete openness here. This is my first Instagram live. I've done Facebook lives. I've done Zoom. I've done wow, Teams. I've wow. done, you know. <laughs> but, um, I'm no longer an Instagram virgin, so um, live virgin. So there's always a new thing to learn. Hmm. And what I have loved um, about uh, operating in the virtual space, which I was doing long before COVID hit, but, of course, COVID has made it so much more um, uh, essential is that I have added a huge number of skills yeah. to uh, to bag of tricks, but also I have met people like yourself yeah. uh, that I would never have met before mm. and been able to forge relationships yeah. that um, yeah would have been impossible because in Australia we're a long way from anywhere. I know, I you know. know. <laughs> a day to get anywhere except to Asia, hmm. you know, so it, on a plane. So to be able to instantly yeah. connect with another human being, yeah. you know, on the other side of the planet yeah. uh, and build connections and networks yeah. is a fantastic thing yeah. to be able to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm so delighted, you know, because, uh, you know, I mean, I know that um, – like, you know, you, you speak about unconscious bias. You know, some people, uh, the reason why they, they don't build global networks is because they have a limited mindset, you know. Uh, yes. they, want, they want to relate with people based on the color of their skin, uh, based on, you know, the uh, community that they come from, and it gives them a very myopic point of view. What do you think about that? Uh, I would agree. I, it is... Um... I think meeting people who are different to ourselves will always challenge us. Mm. And that is a good thing. Yeah. Because I know myself, I make assumptions, and this is normal human behaviour, yeah. you know, I make assumptions about a person and often based on their appearance. Mm. So their age, <laughs> their skin, yeah. their gender often, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, their height these all go on instantly in my yeah. brain and this is and these are our biases our assumptions our preconceptions about people that have built up over time and often through the things that we've learned in the past and particularly 
in our childhood. So yeah. that when we meet different people, these things spark off in our brain without us being no. intentional. Yeah. It. But what the work that I do, because my tagline is making bias conscious, is yeah. helping us realise this is happening and then not allowing that to get in the way of making connections with people that we may not otherwise have made connections with. That's right. That's right. You know, because, I mean, for me, um, I've travelled, I've been widely travelled, I've gone, been to the US, been to, you know, different continents and uh, also schooled abroad. It helped me, but initially when I was doing my master's uh, in the UK, um, I was the only black guy in the class, you know, so I was tough with 27, uh, so 26 white, white people and just myself. You know, so we, when we had assignments uh, for and against, I would argue against myself, you know, because there was no one to pair with me. <laughs> but, you know, I learned the hard way. But, um, I mean, because there's some people that, you know, they can't really just break out and, you know, enter that global network, you know, because people are looking for authentic people. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, look... Completely agree. Authenticity, whatever that looks like for you, because my authenticity is based on who I am. Mm. Yours is based on who you are. That's right. But if two people are authentic, then they will find commonalities, places of connection, mm. because they are both, because I think one of the things about being authentic is understanding ourselves, you know, growing in our self-awareness, yeah. but also then not having any hidden agendas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, we pick up on those vibes if we think we're talking to somebody who has a hidden agenda or is wanting to use us for their yeah. own purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and that's why I tell people that if you want to be global, um, you must, uh, you know, you must have social proof. Uh, you must be consistent yes. because people will check you out. You know, they will check you out. Um, they want to know if what you're doing is uh, authentic and, you know, whether you are really what you say you are because uh, yes. quite a number of people will put themselves out there and embellish and just create, you know, that picture of, uh, you know, being so successful. Maybe they're just learners. And what do you think? Yeah, look, I agree. Um, you know, it's important to have a good website, you know, because that is pro often the first port of call for people checking us out. But a website can be deceiving in that that's obviously where you put the best of the best. <laughs> and uh, it's important to do that. You're not going to put all your warts um, and your foibles uh, out on, um, on, uh, on your website. Yeah. However... Consistency on different social media platforms, whether it's you know Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter, that is that it's much harder to hide there. Yeah. You know, my main um, platform that I use is LinkedIn, yeah. and if anybody, and it then becomes my my resume, my calling card, you know, yeah. my business card, That's because right. people can then go and see. What have I been consistently doing? What commentary have I been making? What um, what posts have I been putting up? How have I been engaged, engaging with other people? And you, it's much harder to hide. Yeah. Like I know we can still be a bit fake on on social media, but we, if you are consistently posting on a particular um, platform, yeah. then it is actually harder to fake that for a long period of time. That's right, that's right. You know, because, um, I mean, I've been, I've been on Twitter for phew, about 12 years, but it was during the lockdown that I really, you know, but in that 12 years, I was posting maybe once a week or once a month. But with the lockdown, you know, I, I had to do something. I had to pass my message across, you know, so I built that yes. consistency. And on Facebook as, as well, you know, I started first with customer retention, which I'd been there for 10 years. You know, incidentally, that was where I wrote my first book from, you know, uh, all the posts that are, and comments that I made, you know, I put everything together and it became the, my, the first edition of my book, you know. So I can tell you uh, social media has helped me, but 
in the lockdown, like I shared, you know, I'd been on the session for an hour, you know, and I have, uh, <laughs> you know, one of uh, uh, the people on that session, she's on, on this platform now, her name is Chioma, you know, uh, she's, <laughs> you know, in fact, I was chatting her up, you know, and she, I, and I saw your message on, uh, on, on the Gmail and I said, would she like to come back in? Yeah, yeah. So she's, Chioma, I just want to appreciate you for, you know, taking your time out to listen. So, um, so, but basically, what, what, what um, I also found out was that, you know, the podcast helped me to, uh, you know, uh, really pivot, you know. Uh, what do you think about podcasting? Well, of- I love podcasting. And yeah. that's uh, how we met was through, um, you know, my being a podcast guest uh, on your podcast. And I, I, I like podcasts. Again, you have to be authentic because you're in a conversation with somebody for half an hour or an hour. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be anything other than yourself yeah. in that space. So I think podcasting allows you, it allows you to get your message across in a different manner. And yeah. I love the interactive nature of podcasting because it's like having a conversation uh, with someone. Well, it is having a conversation with yeah. someone. But I think in terms of... Uh, well, well, from my perspective, your audience is not an audience that I would normally be able to reach. But yeah. because I'm talking with you, then yeah. from, you know, with my business, I now have reach into an audience that I wouldn't be able to um, access otherwise. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's one of the things about podcasting is that you meet, and I love meeting people, um, new people. You know, you meet new people, you have access to a larger audience. That's right. Because if you're committed to the message that you're bringing and the work that you're doing, it's actually uh, viable for any audience. Yeah. And, and so to be able to get that wider is a fantastic right. thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, I mean, for me... Um, I'm just thankful for the podcast. I mean, it's taking me, you know, I showed my analytics yesterday on uh, social media. I'm sure you must have seen it. Uh, yes. Know, Spain, India, uh, Australia, of course, you know, 3% in Australia, <laughs> including yourself, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, in the US, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, you know, and even in Nigeria, the podcast is... Uh, you know, one of the, one of the most, um, you know, uh, top, the top management podcast in Nigeria, Leadership Talk with Adi Goke, you know. Excellent. Yeah. What do you think about consistency if you want to be a global, uh, to grow globally? Do you think consistency is important? Uh, absolutely. It was very interesting this morning because I've, um, here in Australia, things really slow down over this uh, December, January period. It's our summer holidays. And so people are really only starting to kick back into gear now and, and February will be, you know, back full swing. And so I haven't done a lot on my socials. I, you know, I've stayed engaged. I but haven't posted a lot. And um, I looked at, there was a post on LinkedIn this morning that said, and this is from someone who uh, works helping other people, you know, build their profiles yeah. on LinkedIn, and she said you, most of us won't get the the viral posts. Wow. You know? Yeah, most of us won't get that. She yeah. said that's okay. Just be consistent with your content. Yeah. Just be consistent with your content. Wow. So, um that encouraged me because I, you know, when I look at my views on my posts, I've had some that have been in the thousands, but yeah. most of them are a couple of hundred, 400, maybe 500 views. And then, and then others are only, only get maybe, you know, 50 or 60 views. And you wonder because you, you feel, well, I feel that the content is similar. Yeah. Um, but it's that consistency, building it up. And I think that's one of the things that I like about LinkedIn, yeah. um, but also, but, but Twitter and Facebook are the same and Instagram, you just choose the one that you feel will be the best platform to get your own uh, business out. But yeah, just being consistent, sharing 
your content, like you use the term adding value, add yeah. value all the time. Yeah. Um, and in a sense, don't worry too much about engagement is great, but people want to know what you know <laughs> and whether what you know is of value to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. That's that's so good, Bron. You know, I, I mean, for me, I, I just want to stay, you know, authentic, uh, stay focused on my message. Because, you know, there's a lot of noise out there. You know, I mean, if care is not taking, you might want to deviate from what you're doing. What do you think about that? Yes. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, I have to say that to myself at least once a day. Yeah. Stay focused, Ron, because we can get distracted. And I think particularly when we're running our own business and doing a lot of it online, we can see someone else's post and you know, and I, you know, I have I have a friend who's flying off to Dubai to do an in-person presentation, and I'm going, how did she get to do that? That's amazing. I'm really pleased for her. But the temptation is to go, well, why aren't I doing that? The reality is, she's working in tech stuff. I don't work in tech stuff. That's yeah. why she's going to Dubai. Yeah. Dubai. Yeah. It's but we can get distracted by mm. other people's opportunities and yeah. and then question well why why isn't that happening to me that comes back as you said to our mindset to our biases around what we think of ourselves yeah. and our own value and that's really important to challenge that for ourselves but then to come back and go what is it that i'm about what am i doing what is my focus what is you know my unique selling point yeah it's so important that we come back to that Wow, wow, wow. That's so good. That's so good, Brown. You know, because, you know, if you don't run your race, you know, uh, you might end up running somebody else's race. Like you said, your friend was going to Dubai and you felt that, you know, some people might even buy just go and buy a ticket and say, look, I'm just going to go to Dubai and whatever happens, you know, go on an adventure and end up messing it all thing up, you know. Because, you know, Absolutely. life is about, you know, consistency compounds. You know, people are watching, they're looking for, you know, content, they're looking for leadership. Uh, they're looking for uh, credibility. They're looking for passion because, you know, you can't just fake it, you know. You can fake it for a while, but you run out of momentum, you know. During the lockdown, the whole system was so busy. Uh, social media was busy. You know, everyone was speaking. But you see that, you know, things have calmed down a bit, you know. Uh, there's a, what you call a sorting, <laughs> you, know, you know. When you go to the post office, you have a lot of mails coming. From different nations, yes. you have to do the sorting. Is that right? Very much so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? Decide: yeah. is this letter actually for me, <laughs> or do I need to pass? <laughs> you, you, you think that that's sorting? You know, I mean, the social media yes. was very busy during the lockdown. What, 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 what do you observe now? What is happening now? You know, in, in your own opinion. Well, actually, I have noticed, um, I've noticed on LinkedIn there's a, been a real shift. Uh, prior to lockdown and maybe even in the first year of the, so in 2020, there was still very much a business focus on LinkedIn. People posted about, you know, things to do with HR or their company or their professional move or whatever. In the last year, there has been a huge shift to much more personal um, information, okay. uh, you know, about their families, about their life challenges, and then linking that back to a business um, okay. focus. So that that is actually a challenge because I'm quite a content-driven uh, person I, on I uh, LinkedIn. Not that I don't share personal things, but... I have been con content driven. So this is now a challenge for me is to, well, how do I then engage people now that the focus has it's shifted? Also been on because I, and all that, yeah. I don't want to lose the, um, the, the momentum and the essence, but also the, the quality of the, my, um, my profile and my presence on LinkedIn. Uh, because things have shifted. So yeah. that's a challenge. And I think that's that's a good thing because we can get a bit blasé about stuff. We can get comfortable um, ar around things. 
I've also set myself a challenge this year to um, be much more active on Instagram. Okay. And then again, it comes back to being creative about yeah. how do I do that? How do I share in a visual way the, the content that I have? And then I'm also using Twitter more as a conversation awesome. um, because I, I, I actually get much more engagement if I comment on other people's tweets yeah. rather than put out my own. So that's... <laughs> Yeah. It, it's really about sensing what is working yeah, yeah. and being both strategic and intentional because I think one of the most important things about operating in social media is, and particularly when you're running your own business, is to ensure that it always reflects on your brand the way you want it to. That's right. That's that right. You know, there is no point in flying off <laughs> and making some you know, radical statement or getting angry with somebody on a um, on a social media post yeah. because that stays there. It yeah. doesn't go away. You can't actually completely delete it. So you have to be very careful wow. about wow. how you express yourself wow. Wow. and what you wow. choose to Wow. If you're enjoying, Bron, if you're enjoying this conversation, just say thank you. Say thank you. I mean, Bron is speaking all the way from Australia. It's about 24 hours flight. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> close to Papua New Guinea <laughs> and Tonga. You know, you know, just say okay. thank you if you are enjoying this session. Just say thank you. Just say thank you. Now, Bron, I, I want to uh, thank you for your authenticity because you know, um, you know, Australians. Uh, I've never been to Australia. I mean, with all the saga of uh, Novak, you know, uh, so many things came out came to light. You know. Uh, the way he was deported and so on and so forth. But, I mean, you know, Australia, you guys stood your ground. You know, you stood your ground irrespective of the fact that Novak had so much clout internationally. And yeah. can you just speak to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, look, that it, it was really a complex issue because there were about, you know, there were different players involved. There was Tennis Australia, the Victorian state government, our federal government, and then uh, Novak Djokovic and his team. We have had a very firm line um, around vaccinations here and we continue to in Australia. And we, there, there have been exemptions for people to come to Australia, mostly because of medical reasons. You know, okay. some people cannot get vaccinated. You know, they, they have an anaphylactic reaction to the vaccine or yeah. um, or something. And, look, that's quite legitimate. And, you know, Novak Djokovic has made, him, made it quite clear where he stands in this area. But, how, however, he was able to get an exemption through an independent body, an independent panel, um, set up between the Victorian State Government and Tennis Australia. So that seemed legitimate. It was then up to the federal government to issue his visa in accordance with that, that exemption, and, and they did. And then I don't know. I really don't know. I don't think we'll ever know what really was happened. behind all this. Yeah. Yeah, what really happened behind all this. But I think probably is a, there's two observations one is I think you just need to stick to your own rules. And this, you know, I think this applies as much in business as it does in, in government at, at, a, at a national and global level. You know, we, we've had mandates and we're not the only country that says you can't come in unless you're double vaccinated. Actually, I think Serbia has ex exactly the same yeah. um, vaccination status as we, as Australia does. So I think it's really important to stick to those Things and not make exemptions unless it's absolutely necessary. Wow. And wow. then I think the other side of things is for people to respect the boundaries that nations or people or businesses set to. And I don't feel as though Novak Djokovic actually respected the boundaries that were being set by mm. Australia. Like if I go to Serbia and I'm not double vaccinated, I won't be able to get in. Wow. Because that's their laws. You have to respect that. And I know he has said that he he respected the decision, but 
it appears now that he wants to sue the Australian government for $9 million. Wow. So to me, that's not affecting um, our government's uh, rules. So it's so murky. And I think that's one of the things that most of us here in Australia just see. It's so murky. It doesn't matter which side of the fence, whether you were supporting Novak or you weren't. It's just murky. Wow. And that, that's done nothing, I don't think, for Novak's brand as a player um, because people now question that. And, you know, we're seeing reports that he might not even be able to play at the French Open. Yeah. Because he hasn't been forthcoming about his vaccination status. Nobody actually knows wow. whether he's vaccinated or not. Yeah. That come brings us back to authenticity, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So which I can tie to, you know, why we you know we're, why we're here. You know, how to grow your global uh, networks, you know. Because you must really be able to stand for something. You must be principled, you must be consistent, you must be authentic, you must be clear, there must be no ambiguity. Because if you say you're this today and you're that tomorrow, uh, there's this mixed messaging, you know, uh, and yes. people don't want to buy into your brand. Because you know what I stand for. You know, I'm a leadership coach, yes. I'm a customer service coach, because you don't want to put yourself out there with someone who is inconsistent, you know. And so it's, it, it, because it's a long journey, isn't it? What do you, what, what, what do you, what, what's your position? What's your opinion? Oh, absolutely. It takes a long time for you to build your brand, for you to build a position in which people go, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. Because I could set up any sort of business and say I can do it, but unless I can back it up with knowledge consistently and with results, with engagement with people, then, you know, a business means nothing. And so, you know, that's why, you know, I've set myself up. Uh, my business is the bias specialist. Um, I'm not the bias expert because yeah. the expert says that they know everything. Hello, I don't. I'm still learning. Yeah. I am a specialist in the area of bias. This is my focus area. Now, if, and this is where we come back to what you were talking earlier about focus and not getting distracted by the bright, shiny things. Yeah. I have to come back often to the fact that my focus is on bias oh, because wow. I, can, I can talk to lots of different things because bias underlies racism and gender inequity, sexism, ageism, so many things. Yeah. I can speak to each of those but I must bring my focus back to bias, to that way of thinking that fuels all the other, all these other things. That is so critical because wow. I could get shot off in all sorts of different um, <laughs> ways. Yeah, and, you right. know, people, and it's great to be able to comment on those things, but you must come back to this, the essential core. Mm. That's right. You know, which also takes me to collaboration. You know, I, I believe that, you know, uh, there's this saying that if you want to go fast, you can go alone. But if you want to go far, you need to go, uh, you know, as a team. Um, I mean, you and I, we've collaborated on several occasions and, you know, it's an ongoing thing. And I'm so proud of you. Uh, you're showing up mm -hmm. massively all over the world and your message is, is you know, is crossing boundaries, you know, and uh, your authenticity is so clear. Your clarity is there, your consistency is there, and also the collaboration, you know, because some people feel that, you know, you can't do it alone. You know, can, can you speak to that? Oh, look, I completely agree. Um, I did it alone for about three years, and I, did, I didn't actually get very far. And a, and a lot of that was actually financial. I was not in a, in a solid financial position. And so I was taking advice from people over here. You know, I'd get a free bit from over here and something over there. And so you'd run with this direction for a little bit, try to apply that information. But I didn't actually get anywhere until I decided I was going to invest in my business and in myself and get myself a good business coach, wow. which um, I I've been working with Jacqueline Nagel now for a good two and a half, coming up to th it'll be three years later this year. Awesome. And the 
exponential growth in that time wow. has been huge. We have got to in this two and a half years compared to the previous three wow. is just huge. But so much of it is what's going on between my ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we come back to mind mindset, come back to addressing the biases in ourselves that get in the way. And I'll just share quickly uh, one that I've had to address, and that's a bias around age. Now, you know, full disclosure, I'm 65. I'm going to be 66 this year. Well done. I'm the eldest in my family, and my two siblings who are younger than I have both moved into semi-retirement. Wow. And here am I. A, a business, building a global business, wanting to make a global impact. Yeah. And well my own businesses around, well, at my age, shouldn't I, buy, I be retiring? Shouldn't I be slowing down? I can't do this at my age. I'm too old. I've let my run too late. And my, my, uh, my lovely coach, Jacqueline, she kept coming back to me and saying, Bron, age is just a number. Age is just a number. Age is just a number. But it wasn't until I connected the dots and thought, ah, oh, in my family, my siblings are already moving into semi-retirement. That's what's normal in my family. And I was going against that norm, against the normal pattern. And once I realised that and realised I had an ageist bias against myself, which just sounds a bit dumb, but, you know, we do silly things to ourselves, that actually set me free. Wow. Because now I'm happy to say that I'm 65 and I'm going to go until I'm 95. Wow, 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 wow. Because so, why can't I do it so, now? So, so age is just a number. Yeah. Yeah, age is just a number because my brain is active. I've got energy. Yes, my body is slowing down. Hey, that's, you know, part of, part of being this age. But I have enthusiasm, I have things I want to achieve, and I don't want to get to the end of my life knowing that I didn't give it a red hot go. Wow, wow. That you didn't give it your best, you know. I'm I'm just so proud yeah. of you, you know. I mean, you get you're going to sixty six and you you're still showing up globally, you're adding value. I mean, you're in Australia, I mean, and um, you've broken down, you know, those obstacles. And it's all about mindset, you know, because quite a number of people in your, your age bracket, they will say, oh, they're already six, going to be 66, they need to shut down. But you are showing up massively, you know, and you're building your competence. You, you're building, yeah, Paula yes. Fire, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, you know, she's, she's also validating what you're saying, you know. Um, you know, yes. when, people, when people get to that age, you know, I mean, is it, is it not Kentucky, the, the, the founder of Kentucky, was he not 65 when he started the business? Absolutely, absolutely. And I've been convinced for many years now that we, for many of us, we get to do the one thing that we put on this earth to do in this last third of our lives because our families have grown, we're probably financially stable. We don't actually have a lot of needs. You know, I don't need a huge house. I don't need the, the latest flashy car or a new boat or whatever. I'm really you get much more content with, um, I was going to say less, because you, I suppose you get to an age where you realise what's important and things really are not important. So you've got time to be focused yeah. on something specific. And each of us are unique. We've each got a particular story in our lives mm. and it's often out of that story that we have something unique to give to the world. Wow, wow, wow. You know, I mean, I, I just want to say that, you know, I totally agree with you, you know. Uh, for me, uh, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not as, you know, uh, advanced as you are in terms of age, but, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not as old as you are, he says. <laughs> but I, I'm also a youth, you know, but, I mean, I'm showing up there, uh, out there, pushing myself out there, you know, uh, learning new things also uh, making myself accountable um, you know to yourself we we've had so many sessions together now in the third session and um i just don't want to uh, build you know a wall you know i build i, I love to build bridges you know uh yes. cross nations 
And I see that happening, you know, much more even in 2022. Uh, I love collaborations. Uh, my podcast, like I said, I've had 80% of people from diaspora, you know, Caucasians, most especially, you know, because, you know, wh when, you, when you show up and you're only showing up based, you know, with people in your own, you know, based on the color of their skin, it, it, you know, gives a very, uh, you know, a very challenging impression about you. What do you think about that? I, I agree. Um, because I think one of the things that talking with someone who is different to you, actually, there are two things. One, you realise actually how much alike you are. You know, you and I think similarly, which is why we've connected. Yeah. So we're different ages, different genders, different skin colours, different racial groups. You know, so there's a lot of things that are different um, about us. And yet we think similarly. And I think that's one of the things about meeting different people is you actually find your points of connection with them. But also what that meeting someone and collaborating with someone who is different to you means that you do have those little rough areas in your character or in your thinking, start, th those start to get abraded. There's a lovely verse in the Bible that talks about, uh, you know, as iron sharpens iron, one, yeah, so yeah, one man sharpens yeah, another. Yeah. And, you know, that, that is, there is so much truth. That's a lovely piece of poetry, but there is so much truth in that, is that when we mix with people who are different to us, we actually have to listen carefully to um, what they say and allow and be open and be and be curious That's about right. what they have to say and not make any assumptions. I want to give you an example of this. Um, gosh, it seems like forever ago, but uh, early 2020, I did a series of um, YouTube uh, conversations with a variety of different people called Bringing Bias In From The Cold. Yeah. And I spoke with people in Australia, um, in India and in Ghana. And my friend Fusina in Ghana, she, we, we were talking about bias. I only had three questions. What is bias? What have you been your experiences? And, you know, and what can we do about it? So we kept it very open, had great conversations. As Fusina was talking and talking about her situation in Ghana, I felt myself wanting to interrupt her because I didn't agree with what she was saying. I felt that mindset, her, it wasn't actually a mindset, it was her viewpoint, her worldview, I thought could be improved. Hello. Anyway, you know, that was, that was going on in my brain. And then I took myself to task. So this is going on, it ticking away in my brain as yeah. I'm listening to Fisina speak. It was like, no, Bron, you are coming at this from your white Western Australian mindset. You need to listen to Fusina's African Brian mindset. And I, it was such an eye-opener for me that, firstly, I was making these instinctive, biased reactions to what she was saying but then i could make the shift to wow. intentionally listening and wow. that is so important so there's a sense in which it's really important this is what again i come back to my tagline making bias conscious so that we're aware that our biases are operating and they will do that before we even consciously think about it you know <laughs> they just they just jump in there but when we are aware of them, we then get the choice. That's Do right. I act out of that? In my case, say something that might have actually put a wedge between us as, as friends and collaborators, right. or right. do I keep my mouth shut and listen hmm. and accept that that's how she sees the world? Yeah, that's right. Because, you know, you, you need to uh, you embrace other people's cultures, you know, uh, so, so that you can become really global. Because you don't want to put people off, you know, by your attitude and your intolerance, you know. Uh, yes. You just feel that this is the way things ought to be and uh, that's the way it's going to be. But you lose friends, you lose, uh, 
you also lose credibility as well. And so you, you must be yes. able to strike the balance, you know, because being a global player, I mean, for you and I, I mean, showing up uh, is also an encouragement to uh, quite a number of people, um, you know, that these things are possible, you know, um, you don't have to have, have uh, you know, uh, sort of like build a wall, you know, and because the wall gets, gets better if we're able to collaborate, you know, uh, based on, a, you know, a culture, you know, tribe, you know, and it, it becomes more interesting, uh, you know. Uh, for me, uh, sc having schooled abroad helped me a bit to break that, that uh, ba uh, barrier because some people have never really traveled outside their environment. Uh, I, I realized that in the U.S., uh, maybe about 70% of the senators have never traveled outside America, you know. And so, <laughs> you know, the, the view about, you know, others, it's, it's, very, it's very narrow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because it, the average American will say that if he's traveling, he will say, oh, I, I traveled from Colorado to, to uh, New York. You know, I, I went from Atlanta to uh, Arkansas, you know, and that's, you know, that's like the world, you know, they have everywhere is far apart. But for uh, those of us in Africa, we, we do a lot of migration. We travel, you know, we're widely traveled, particularly like Nigerians, they, they're all over scattered in, your nations, all, and the more you travel, it exposes your mind. But it's now what you do with that travel. You know, are you able to translate it and turn it around into, um, you know, something positive? What, what's what's your view? What's your view on that? I'm so glad you said that because Australians are well travelled. You know, hello, we're a long what long way from everywhere, and we do like to travel and see the world. However. Australians are also quite biased in many ways. We have huge issues with racism um, here in Australia and we can be very narrow-minded. And I think that's because exactly what you say, yes, we can go off and see the world, but we don't let the world shape us. Mm. And that is the key. I remember uh, many years ago um, I went to London and I met up with um, a woman from the US and the whole time we were there. She was comparing what was happening, the food, everything in London, to what she could get back. <laughs> you sort of felt like people well, just go home, you know. Um, did I always like the food in London? Yeah. No. <laughs> like, that doesn't mean it was about, um, you know, experiencing something. And I and I brought London home under my skin from that. You know, I, I stayed in the in the Piccadilly area Pick and just circus, yeah. oh, the street people and Leicester Square Garden and, you know, so many things. I only have to say those words and the images are in my mind. So I think it's really about what we choose to do with the experiences in our life. Yes, travel can broaden our perspective, but only if we take note of what we see and what we experience. If we just go and take all the happy snaps with our uh, camera, come back, put them in a folder, and you know, and they're there, we yeah. can say, you know, I've seen the tower, I've seen um, Tower Bridge, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, that that doesn't that hasn't changed us because they're, they're just landmarks. Yeah. But it's the people that we meet, it's what we've observed, what we've allowed those experiences to do to us. That is the key. That's right. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm so happy you, you're saying that because, you know, um, a lot of us, we, we travel, but, you know, the traveling, we should also incorporate it, you know, if, even in a, you know, uh, lifestyle. Uh, and and it, it makes your, your message even more authentic. You know, I've had a mixture of living in the UK, travel to the US, you know, travel, you know. And so my, my, my view is more um, I'm more flexible, I'm more open. Um, you know, I, I allow myself to learn from other cultures and I see, I look for ways of incorporating that, you know, in what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so through the leadership podcast, you know, I would add, okay, you know, I have a rapport with a lot of the guests uh, beyond just leadership. We formed alliances with yourself, you know, uh, in Canada, you know, uh, 
my good friend, you know, uh, that you introduced me to, uh, uh, Joyx, Phil Joyx, you know. And so we're breaking boundaries. And, and I, I just believe that in 2022, uh, for you to uh, sell anything, you must be global, you know, uh, because, you know, if you have a local market, it's saturated, you know, uh, you struggle to uh, make, you know, uh, headway and make a lot of traction in that environment. But there are places where your knowledge or your skill, or your expertise is required, you know, that cuts across boundaries and you can, you're seen as, you know, something that is very, uh, very attractive and brings freshness. What, what do you say to that? Look, I agree that um, when you're wanting to be, make a global uh, have global in fact, yeah, influence or impact, you have to be aware about how you're coming across to people. And this is where we come back to authenticity again. Yeah. Because in the end, you can only be yourself. Mm. You know, you can pretend to be somebody else for a certain period of time. <laughs> but in the end, you can only be yourself. So I, I think if you stay true to who you are and what your message is, then that that transcends the differences that there might be between nationalities, countries, races, outlooks, faiths, all of those sorts of things. That transcends that because people connect with the, the same that mm. is in humanity because, right. you know, there are similar values across the world. You know, we value honesty. We value authenticity. We value hard work. You know, we value kindness mm. and justice. Mm. So, you know, people as, as, as a whole do that. So I think it's so important that we come back again to that authenticity. If you're wanting to do something global, actually, even if you just want to be the local corner store, still be authentic because yeah. people will come back and buy from you. They will connect with you. So, yeah, so authenticity is such a huge thing. But I do think that... As we do things globally, you do have to be aware of difference. Yes, right. um, my partner, lovely man, very traditionally white Australian male, and he um, he will say something to me about, say, oh, this isn't racist, is it? And he'll then make a comment about about difference. And I'll say to him, no, Bill, that's not racist. You are just noticing the differences because he works with people from Pakistan and India, you know, and he'll comment about, you know, I don't know, something that's different about them. And I said, no, that's not racist. You've just noticed the difference. It is racist when you say all Indians are fill in the blanks and, you know, something negative or all, yeah. um, you know, all Asians are. It's, you know, it's, Adding a moral value to someone based on their on their on their race or es, um, ethnicity, but it's about being aware of those differences and l I think listening for those differences and as well. It, yeah, yeah, but not a, yeah. Yes, I think leveraging is right in that you go, okay, this is different to me. How how can I help them or how can they help me? But also being respectful. Yeah. around difference um, as well, knowing that and being prepared sometimes, and I think particularly as a, as a white person, being prepared to have someone of a different uh, nationality or race say, yeah. oh, did you mean what you said? Because sometimes we can say things, you know, I suppose a bit like my partner, he's a bit more conscious of these things now and he pulls himself up. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we, we're not always aware and we say something. So to be open to being corrected mm. by somebody who's different to us because they've heard something in how we speak or an expression that we've used that could actually be offensive, but we don't realise it. Wow, 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 wow. You've been so amazing, you know. Uh, for those on the platform, I just want to say thank you to Bron Williams all the way from Melbourne, Australia. I just said thank you. Thank you to her. You know, I mean, this is this is massive. I just want to celebrate you for your leadership and your authenticity. I just have one more question for you. Um, this session has been good. Uh, for those who are going to be listening, uh, just make sure you take as much notes as you can. 
how to grow your global networks, how to grow your global networks. Now, Bron, if we want to reach out to you, how can we connect with you for those of, on the platform if they want to reach out? Sure, sure. A couple of good ways. My email is info at brotwilliams.com. Okay. And um, I'll, let's see if I can pop that into the, um, okay. in, in as a comment here. So that's a good way. Yeah. Or connect with me um, on LinkedIn because okay. I'm Bron Williams. On uh, all right. The Bron Williams specialist. Okay. There we go. Yeah. A minute. Why did that come up? There we go. Post. Okay. So there's my, there's okay. my um, Bron Williams. address. Okay. Okay. So comes my um, website. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So so those much. are the best. Ways. Thank you so much. So on behalf of myself, I'm Bron. We just want to thank everyone for joining in, and this is uh, Adego Kiamotula, Coach Adego Kiamotula. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. So have a good evening and good it's morning to you once again, Bron. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we connected. Oh. <laughs> Despite the sound <small> differences. <laughs>